Hello, Mike, the MC. Thank you, yes, the MC oh, does real, Mike. Face. You're absolutely right. Well, looking at Weasel <laughs> from Suicide Squad, that's why Stephen's laughing. <laughs> and Weasel was the fucking standout of Suicide Squad, it has to say. I've done this. Be <laughs> Marty Feldman, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, Billy Connolly, when I was a welder. Hello and welcome to this Wednesday's edition of Movie News here at MBE. We'd just like to thank you once again for joining us here on our YouTube channel and of course our Twitch YouTube. stream. I'm one of your co-hosts, Stephen John McLaughlin, and the other co-host here five days a week, sometimes six or seven when we knock out the trails at the weekend, it's John C. Walsh. Always here. It always appears we're always sitting in this always. room, but... Well, not. It's a <laughs> optical illusion. I was out for a cycle, Stephen, <laughs> to earn my yeah, chocolate yeah. waffle and my ha- my, not my Hagen Dash, my Ben and Jerry's vanilla ice cream. Well, it had to be earned, and I earned it. Yeah, a two-kilometre walk and a three-kilometre cycle. Well, my hand's nearly back. It's nearly back to normal, John. So I'll be getting back to Stephen. I'm, shortly. I'm, I'm be so intrigued to see how you tackle those hills. Um, mm. Eight minutes. I think I'm going to have to just build it up once more. 
but there I you go. I think you're doing Stephen, I think you're fit enough. You're a big guy. Well, I fell off, you saw me falling off my bike, yeah, John, it was a sore one, but... You stay away uh, from the corners. Yeah, I, sure I've got to stay away from bikes, I think, but <laughs> anyway, we're not here to talk about cycling, uh, we're here to talk about Francis Ford Coppola. There's Francis. a name you might have not have heard of in a long time, but we all know the name because he's a legendary director. Well, we know him from last year because him and Scorsese were having a sort of bitch fest about the MCU. Yeah. Says it yeah. If yeah. anybody's going to have a bitch fest about the MCU, it's, it's the big guns, be Mark yeah. Scorsese and Francis yeah. Ford Coppola because they know what they're fucking talking we're about. Top, before, we, before we came on, we were talking about event directors, and normally we leave that for the likes of Tarantino's mm. and the Christopher Nolan's, but above them, the the big hitters, sort of you've got the OG. 70. You, you mentioned them, Scorsese, Lucas, Ford Coppola, Lucas. Lucas. Spielberg. Spielberg, to an extent, isn't an event. Like, he not, can knock them out. Well, he does quite three event movies. Sporadically, in yeah. Yeah. Three in a yeah. year. 93 was a particularly good vintage. Yeah. But he'd he done. He's, he's consistently not fucking multiple movies. I had to compare year. Francis Ford Coppola's directing to uh, an actor's. So it probably would be Daniel Lewis, I think. He picks his moments. He picks his moments, John. I think he has this time as well. Now. He does a lot of different genres. John, I might butcher the title of this because I'm not really sure how to say it. Shall Me- I say it? Mega. Me- Meg- Megalopolis. Megalopolis, is that how you're saying it? That's how I'm saying I've got Metropolis stuck in my head, so I'm trying to say it that way. Megalopolis. Megalopolis, Don't but that is. Uh, I'm, <laughs> you fucking doing that. I'm glad we're not doing this on Friday nights when we've got the beers drawn, but <laughs> uh, he's betting. Uh, uh, Francis Ford Sunday Coppola night, is betting big on his next film, self financing the reported $120 million <laughs> picture and looking at me, Francis. big stars for it, yeah. This guy can do this, John. Um, Hell, Stephen, the Childish Gambino song, I'll bring it back. I'll bring me on the screen. Yeah. Live like a couple of me and Sevilla waking up broke man wouldn't want to be here. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway. Waking up broke man wouldn't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> but Francis Ford Fucking Coppola is song, betting man. big Sweating. on the next film, which could include the talents of Oscar Isaac. Forrest Whitaker and more Francis Ford Coppola is one of the most recognisable names in cinematic history having helmed some of the most iconic films of all time including the Godfather trilogy Apocalypse Now The Conversation and Bram Stoker's Dracula which I didn't know he did yes I'm ashamed to say but he didn't that's just mean a, nightmares that movie just a, yeah Gary, that Niro? Gary Oldman no it wasn't De Niro De Niro uh, did Frankenstein John. yeah Frankenstein yeah. Right, that gave me nightmares Brad as well. Pitt and Tom Cruise were in this which is rare uh, the a lot filmmaker, of movies gave me nightmares in the 90s Steve. he's won five Academy awards across his career as well John so um, Brian De Palma that was the other name I was going to mention Brian De Palma is one of those yeah. directors who's been off a fucking cliff in recent yeah. years but he'll always be held up you know against the likes of Scorsese Spielberg Lucas yeah, I mean, John yeah he's got De Palma is that even after him I don't know I don't know but Doubt according it. to Deadline Francis Ford Coppola is developing an epic film titled Megalopolis <laughs> that will reportedly cost between 100 to 120 million dollars with Coppola looking to finance most of the film himself he is looking at casting Oscar Isaac Forrest Whitaker Kate Blanchett John Voight <laughs> Jessica Lange Z- Zendaya <laughs> and Michael uh, Michael and Michelle Pfeiffer sorry with Godfather star Scott Can. Scott Can. Scott Can Scott reportedly Can. Say, Godfather star Scott Can. Godfather Can. was out 45 years ago man Fifty years ago. Yeah. <laughs> How did they do that? James he wants, Can. He wants to be my Come Michael. on. But a bit but a bull. That was sunny. Get bitch. a grip, screen run. Fucking James it's Can. James Can, exactly. Be great. Uh, but John, get him on as well. That's a major cut. Oh, Steve, I mean, you, you, if you're going to do movies like this and it's an event movie, mm. and looks, I, I had his filmography up, and uh, realistically, we'll go, we'll go through the filmography briefly. Uh, the Rainmaker was pretty fucking good. That was 97. That was his last one, Stephen. I can't believe it. He that. did Jack before that, and yeah. I liked Jack as a oh, kid. That's okay, yeah. Um, it was yeah. a sort of similar concept to the uh, the other one. It's not, it's not the, the, the was it, it wasn't Philadelphia. The other one. You know what I'm talking about? That other no. movie. <laughs> no. <laughs> the other movie. <laughs> Tom Hanks goes to the sort of fortune machine, and becomes his father. Oh, big. Right. Big. Sorry, John. Yeah, I know what you it's mean. It's kind yeah. of similar. Yeah. To that, is it? It's not because he's a fucking overgrown uh, John, kid, but it's, it's, got, it's a it's kid in an adult's body. Isn't it? So I'm on board. Uh, but Rain Ma- Rain- Rainmaker Stephen he took yeah. a 10 year break about no two- 2000 he did one he's took a long gap that's what I'm saying uh, and oh, it, it's he's primarily did yeah. smaller scale movies yeah. you're coming back with a bang you're going for a 120 150 a million dollar budgeted movie Stephen and you you really have to be bringing together an assortment <coughs> like that in terms of stardom Oscar Isaac John does this intrigue you 
Coppola. Does it tell me yet? Does, what is the concept though of the movie? Coppola describes the film as a Roman epic similar to Ben Hur, oh. but set in modern day New York City. New York. Now he had this to say. I'll just read this, John, um, before you come back New in. York. Um, I'm still on the screen anyway, Steve. That's fine. Yeah, uh, I'm committed to making still. this movie. I'd like to make it in. F- in the fall of 2022. I don't what have all my cast approved, but I have enough of them to have confidence that it's going to be a very exciting cast. The picture's going to cost between 100 million and 120 million dollars. Needless to say, I hope it's closer to 100 million because it's your money. Yeah. I'm prepared to match some outside Holding. finance and almost dollar for dollar. In other words, I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is. What's interesting about that is there was a documentary about my dream studio when I owned Zoetrope Studios with George mm-hmm. Lucas, and I was unafraid to risk everything I had in order to make my dream come true. Well, I really haven't changed my personality That was George, at all. wasn't it? Yeah, it was George, George Lucas, pretty yeah. much risked everything he had yeah. with Star Wars. Yeah. Um, it was a guy that had a passion for this project and yeah. had this goofy project. No one else believed in it. Yeah. No one else believed in it. And Stephen, sadly, where we are uh, in this modern day Apart from a man called Alan Ladd Jr., who was the head at Fox at the time, and took the chance... Yeah, and thank Christ for him. What's the Beatles? Uh, they get knocked back with Decca. Thankfully, yeah. George Martin, this sort of <laughs> comedic <laughs> orchestra Powerful producer, one, yeah. fucking took them on, and the rest was history. The rest was history with George. Stephen, where we are now, the, these kind of movies aren't getting financed. No. It has to be a superhero movie. It has to be a big budget movie. It has to have a superstar, young, vibrant leak like a Ryan Reynolds or something. He's not that young, but he's Why young. Why does he not go to Netflix? That's. <laughs> I mean, that's a million dollar question, isn't yeah. it? Because they probably would finance They'll give him the freedom and they'll give him the finance. Probably sure. because he wants the freedom over creative. Yeah. Deci- well, they'll give him creative decisions, freedom anyway. I mean, he'll have the fucking freedom it's to do what he wants. Coppola, Netflix. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's Nick Coppola. Cage's uncle. Exactly. Yeah. Nick Cage is in with Netflix, so let's be honest, he may have a chance. <laughs> Maybe he just wants to have freedom over how he releases it. Because yeah. if you make it with Netflix, you'll get a one week, two week release window and then it'll be over. But Steve, yeah, George Lucas and uh, yeah, that's a great the great Francis yeah. Ford together. Great friends, actually, we were searching yeah. them up to find a, a photograph for the thumbnail. And I've seen a great, great photograph of him, George Lucas, and obviously Steven Spielberg at the awards. I think they had Mark Scorsese there as well. What a fucking collection Golden of Golden Age, yeah. The absolute creme de la creme, creme de la creme of talent from the 1970s. These wisecracking rebels coming in. And that's why I've already s- spoke about it before, Steve, but slightly disappointed at times when Spielberg and guys like that go after streaming yeah. and go after new forms of making movies because these guys were doing it in the 70s they shook up the sort of establishment yeah. and they changed it and now they've become the stuff of the establishment at times it winds me up but as what it is absolute greats doesn't downplay their brilliance at all for me Steve this does excite me the concept as you know I'm a huge fan of Ben Hur huge fan of Charlton Heston mm. huge fan of fucking Neil Brenner because yeah. I look like him uh, and I've tried to get you stand. I just can't do it. We're getting a little renewed. The last vestiges of summer had a yes, bonus. I say, yeah. And we are getting some lovely sun. But I'm just not going to get you bring up Ten Commandments. Brown. Sadly, she's not going to happen. I ain't getting that tan. But I do, what I'm saying is, I do love those characters. I love those epics from that golden age of cinema. And just the mass sort of size sprawling sets. Mm. It was all on location, it was fucking practical because you didn't have CGI back yeah. then and it lent a sort of authenticity to those movies. It really enveloped you in it, you were there because it was there. Hest- Heston was actually there. He wasn't part of the Red Sea, of course, in the Ten Commandments, but he was there. There was some sort of effects then, but I don't know, the fuck they, I don't know how they did that incident, yeah. that's another day. Maybe it was a sort of Sinbad effect, stop a motion. Yeah. But I love those, I love that era. This is the era this guy sort of grew up in as well, I presume. It was the 50s, the 60s, he'd have been coming through, he'd have been inspired by it. He's never really made a movie like that. So taking that concept, that sort of epic three and a half hour fucking movie concept and popping it in New York, modern day New York, yeah. with an unreal cast, because all those movies had unreal cast, Steve. They all had unbelievable cast, man. I mean, I'm thinking of fucking the likes of Cleopatra and stuff like that yeah. back then. You'd fucking, yeah. your man, Mick Douglas, Kurt Douglas, you'd Vikings, all these fucking, these movies yeah. had unbelievable gas. This is a modern day version of that sort of homage. And you've got everybody in there, Forrest Whitaker, Oscar Isaac, Zendaya, sort of vibrant young actors, older, wiser actors. It could work, could work very well, but it just depends on the script ultimately as Coppola. Yeah. And what you, if he's willing to part with $100 million, $120 so, yeah. million dollars of his own money, there must be something in the script, he must be. He really, believes in it, yeah. He believes in it, yeah. he's putting his own money in it, and that's the only... I mean, if you, you're fucking putting a hundred million dollars in, it must be good. Yeah. It must be. I think John as well, that he's he's, an, uh, he's, a, he's a director that doesn't have to prove anything as well. And as you said, you know, he's not made a, a big big film in 21 years now. And um, I don't think there's any pressure from that point of view from 
Francis Ford Coppola doing this. And I think the fact that you, you mentioned he's, he's putting his own money yeah. up front for this because he believes in it. And I still think, uh, I don't know, maybe he's knocked back from Netflix, maybe he's saying your pal Scorsese's he's clearly he's out with the Irishman. Yeah. I don't know, but um, I'm looking forward to this, John. It's a film that I certainly will watch and I know we will review it. I'll ask Isaac again, Stephen. But they made um, fucking franchises and great movies, yeah. this, apart from Far oh, Jedi. But they're talking about. Did they say release? I can't remember. Did they say a, a, an autumn 2022 release? I'll bring it up, Stephen. We'll I have think a that's look. what you said, John. I just read it and I can't remember now. Autumn 2020, that's concerning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I can't see it, Stephen. Where is yeah, it? I'm sure it was before the photograph, John. It was in his actual um, quote. What? I'd like to make it in the fall. fall you want to make it in the fall, so it probably won't come out to maybe yeah springtime. Yeah, obviously, a sort of an effect heavy thing. You need yeah. the sort of digital artists in to do post. It could be yeah. longer. Yeah. It could be early 2024. It could be John. Yeah, it could be. But um, be starting in fall 2022. I'm just 2022. excited to see this guy doing something big again. Yeah. You know, because um, Is that photograph there, man. We're talking about Tarantino. He's about to come to the end of his. Isn't that a joke, well, Stephen? Yeah. You actually say that. Dan Dino's coming to the end. The guy's only in his 50s. Fucking early 50s or something. Yeah. This guy's in his 70s, 80s. Yeah. He's still going. The only one that's not really making now out of that group is Lucas. Yeah. Doesn't Even then, he's producing. He's the guys involved. in the world. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's made his. But he's creatively, made. you think he would be doing I think he's still projects. involved, Stephen. I think yeah. he does still give advice. And he's, I think he was on board with the Mandalorian, working with Favreau and yeah, Fawn. He was on the set. Spielberg, uh, not Spielberg. Um, who's doing Indiana Jones again? It's uh, um, James Mangold. James Mangold. Yeah. I think he's obviously on as a producer, so he has to keep his fingers in some pies. But certainly, uh, yeah, especially for Steve, Mandalorian. He's a visionary. There's no, there's no better than Josh no, Lucas no, in terms definitely of not. using technology, no. pioneering it alongside the likes of a gym. Perhaps, uh, probably, um, Tolkien, but as a filmmaker, yeah, yeah. John, definitely. An absolute visionary, um, but just the scripts, the times of dialogue and the directing, that let him down. That's why he needed, uh, who was he, the young man that came on and directed? It's the Empire Strikes Back. Erwin. Uh, Erwin Krish. Kirshner. Krish. Krishna. Yeah. Harry Krishna. I went Kershner. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. I think it was Kershner. Yeah. Uh, he, he had, well, we spoke about that before, that's a tangent, but Star Wars really went downhill and he started surrounding himself with little sycophants who says, oh yes, George, that's a great idea, George. Didn't have that in the original days. No. He had a Gary Cutts, yeah. Gary Cutts, he had a group of people who yeah. tell him, nope, that's a fucking terrible idea. Yeah. Don't do it. He had his wife, didn't he? Uh, and a, a yeah, group Marcia, of editors. Yeah, Marcia they actually Lucas, yeah. edited the first movie. It was a disaster of a movie. They brought yeah. it together. It was really made great in the editing. Yeah. He had people like that around him. World War Two footage, didn't yeah. him? Yeah. That's what made it. That's, the, that's what made it, Stephen. You need a strong you group talk around about you. practical, John. It doesn't come more practical than that, does it? You know, and that's what makes ping pong these tables. Kind of film, yeah. That's what makes these. John, actually, we're going off on another tangent. Anyway, talking about the ping pong table scenes. There's this guy on YouTube that does it locates where films were filmed. Mm-hmm. He actually tracked down the actual lot. It was a unit that ILM started off in in the that's early funny. 70s. What they have now, Skywalker Ranch, but. Um, it was a unit in the car park, and it was the actual car park where all these tables were all built for the. And I went, that's right, that's historic, you know. And yeah. probably the people that are there don't even know that. But anyway, yeah, and it winds aside. me up. That's again another tangent. It winds me up when they fucking do that. Yeah, they go to historic places and nobody, nobody cares. Yeah. Uh, John Lennon, fucking hurst, yeah. That that hurst. Hurst. You get some fucking walloper coming in and ripping it apart and changing rooms. That's a fucking. That's, that should be national trust yeah. shit going on yeah. there. Yeah. Preserve that. This yeah. is one of the greatest figures in the, sh- the history. He also spoke about the National Trust. Yeah. Dedicated to the National Trust. That's right, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I could go down the rabbit hole with Beatles. But yeah, fucking winds me up. Yeah. Preserve these things. Um, we were talking about Coppola, <laughs> I can't Francis Ford Coppola, yeah. yeah, he's in talks with Oscar Isaac, but not just Oscar Isaac, an incredible uh, yeah. array of actors. Well, it's part two from June, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Zendaya yeah. and Oscar from Isaac. June. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you've got the likes of Forrest Whitaker, we were speaking about him before we come on, he's never in a bad movie. No. He always has that presence, an incredible actor. Well, what he's, he's never thing? bad in a movie, that's, that's what we yeah. said. Yeah, what did I say there? Uh, you said he's never in a bad movie. He's never bad in a movie, he hasn't some bad movies. Yeah. He was he's in good. one, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. He was an investigator again after somebody, and I cannot for the life of me remember the name of the movie. Taken Three. Was it Taken Three? No. <laughs> he, was, he was the, was he in it? the pursuer, yeah. I don't think Take it was three. that one, though. He was good in it, but the film was terrible. That's what I'm saying. He's that's always fucking, point, yeah. yeah. He's always great. If, even yeah. if, look, Tyler Paffy, even if the movies ain't great, he's great. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. I'm looking forward to team. Hopefully, we can bring it together. Now, and, John. Uh, make Coppola yeah. great again. Exactly. You know, and we've all sampled Coppola's work. 
we've all appreciated his work in different films and stuff like that. John, we're going to talk about something different now. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about something that I did. I saw some episodes of The Sopranos. I, it wasn't my bag. It kind of fits because it's gangster heavy. It's Coppola. It's yeah, The Sopranos. Yeah, I, I get obviously um, why it was so popular twenty odd years ago now, John. Um, early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, and roughly, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, 2000s, now, yeah. We've I've just, never seen it either, Steve. We, well, we've just watched the trailer uh, for Many Saints of Newark. Look how busy that graphic bar is down <laughs> Straight You can't the, put James Gandolfini in a topic bar and yeah. get anything else in it. Yeah. You could have said Michael. <laughs> yeah, I could People be, yeah, bother that. It's even fucking longer, yeah. Steve. <laughs> you know, but, Michael Gandolfini's... Um, so Talk that's what we're talking decision. about because we just watched the trailer, John, and it's been out for two months. Didn't even know anything about this. I was aware of it. I, I was aware know. of it doing something. Yeah. I, I, it came on actually uh, during an advert on YouTube for me, and I went, oh, What's this? We'll talk about obviously the aesthetics, the look, feel, everything in a moment. But this is all about Irishman. James Gandolfini's son Fucking taking Tony Soprano voice. role was his hardest decision. We'll talk about that as well because we've kind of touched these things before. But Michael, Wyatt Russell, son of the late Tony Soprano actor James Gandolfini, says taking his dad's role in Many Saints of Newark was the toughest oh, decision oh, he made. I don't know, I'm not talking about him. Um, but I'm just going to read a little bit, John, about it because I think we've got a little quote from Michael Gandolfini and then we'll talk about a, we'll talk about a few things. Um, but through The Sopranos creator, David Chase, had no hesitation casting James Gandolfini's son. The actor says he did have some trepidations about taking the role. In an interview with Empire, Michael Gandolfini says accepting the role formerly inhabited by his father was the toughest decision he's ever had to make. Get that. Michael Imagine. knew that taking on such an iconic character for his first major performance would be difficult, so he tried not to put too much pressure on himself. This he also realised he would major. be playing a much younger iteration of Tony before he became the cold bloody gangster he is known as in The Sopranos. Now, this is what Michael Gandolfini said, John, taking on the role. He said, You know, I didn't want to put pressure on myself to walk out of this feeling like I'd grown in terms of my feelings towards my dad. I just wanted to be the best actor I could be, portraying Tony in the way. David wanted scene by scene. I didn't think about my grief because, well, I would have shat the bed. <laughs> my dad's character had all the beautiful sensitivity underneath this aggression. I mean, music playing the whole show there. This by the version way. of him is the reverse. <laughs> Mike, you were supposed to warn us about that. This version of him is the reverse. His curiosity and sensitivity comes first. He's not a gun wielding gangster. He's a kid who gets whittled down and pulled in. You tell me we, there was no sound from us at all. No, we had sound, but yeah. we had music overlaying it. That's okay. <laughs> fucking it's, it's, we want to have this hamming <laughs> presence, Sean, so it's cool. As long as it wasn't limmy music, we're fine. I think we're it may okay. have been limmy music. Great. Well. I'm going People to have a think we're having a party in here. <laughs> I'm going to have a listen just yeah. now. But, John, um, I get that. You know, he obviously. That that's a big decision for anyway. We talked about White Russell. We talked about um, oh, fuck's sake, uh, really Bruce sure. Lee's son, uh, Brand. Not are uh, you yeah, Brandon? Uh, he did not want to touch. <laughs> it's a fucking disaster. He did not want to touch. Uh, obviously, the crow roll. Uh, sorry, playing his dad and Bruce Bruce Lee, the the dragon, the Bruce Lee story. But the thing is, is you okay there? Yeah, are we live? <laughs> Are we live? It should be live. Are we live? That's okay then. Um, should be live. But I'm just going to say one thing about this guy, and then I'll let you in. Um, well, well, I shown think on YouTube, no, if you're not live if on you're YouTube. going to do this, if you're going to do this, then I think the best way to do it is when you're starting in your career, rather than the middle, where you've got a lot of expectations on you from previous roles. And um, I'm just going to let you in, John, uh, and you can. I don't think we are live, by the way. I don't uh, think we are. I don't know what's going on here. We're, yeah. we're, we're showing this live in the OBS. Yeah. I don't know if we're live on perhaps Twitch. I think yeah. we're live on we're, Twitch. We're live on Twitch. That's we're not okay. live on YouTube. Well, that's, that's okay. We're live on <laughs> that's Twitch. Why not we can, well, what we can do is we can, we can upload the video yeah. afterwards. So yeah. anybody that's just coming into this show on YouTube, a few technical hitches, but we Bruce. were live and it doesn't matter. Listen, we're here for the fun of it. We're not... <laughs> Going to cry ourselves to sleep because it didn't work out or anything like that. We're on Twitch, so anyone on Twitch, welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, and I knew we were on Twitch yeah. because someone followed us. And thank yeah. you very much to the person who followed us on Twitch. I got that notification. Yeah. Just as we were going live, so and I won't leave it. We will find. upload this, obviously, once yeah. uh, we're, we're done, John. But what's your what's your <laughs> take on this? Because I think um, I think this is a great role. I think it's a great opportunity for Michael. 
uh, Gandolfini as well. Um, we watched the trailer. I think it's a fantastic trailer. It's very intriguing. I think anyone who's not aware of The Sopranos need not worry. Mm-hmm. Because this is a prequel, you can watch this, and it might even entice you to then go and watch the Sopranos television series. Yes, it would. Uh, and Stephen, that's exactly my mindset getting into this. Um, I, I, I'm hoping it pops. I'm hoping the critical response is very positive for this, and also for this young actor coming in and playing his major first major role, and it's his father's sort of iconic role, the one that everyone sort of is drawn to. Yeah. His father for this role—that's what he's synonymous for playing this. Tony Soprano character, which was obviously the, I don't know, what you, you'd even call that the sort of holding name for the actual show, yeah. The Sopranos, yeah, so yeah. But his family, he was a sort of godfather, the matriarchal figure. Uh, it's matriarchal, patriarchal, patriarchal figure, not matriarchal. That's her mother. I'm losing the pot here. Uh, it all went downhill when I realised we weren't on in you. Why the fuck's going on? It's well, live. I tried to hold it together, but you were having a, a mental breakdown. No, because it's seen live on uh, OBS, yeah, live we'll 27 minutes. I go into YouTube, it's not on. I'm like, yeah, we are live. Fuck we, is are, going on? we are live. Well, fa- well that's great. We can can you uplift it from Twitch, though? I think you can download the, that's uh, the thing. Yeah. You can download so. the VOD and then yeah. put it up onto YouTube. Okay. But Stephen, it's his first ever performance, major performance, and he's playing his late great fathers, one of his standout performances of his career. So I hope it's a good. Uh, critical response for this movie. Hopefully he's hit the ball out of the park. It's a fucking home run. And then I can go in with confidence knowing that this isn't going to detract from the greatness of the TV show. I can go in and watch this. If I like it, I like the set and I connect to this character. Yeah. I can then go and watch the TV show and it's maybe, I don't know, just expanded out my enjoyment of it a tiny little bit more. Not to say that I wouldn't enjoy it without this because by all accounts, one of the greatest TV shows of all time. I know fellow movie winner Kevin. Yeah. And your uncle, David. The fucking wax lyrical. They did the tour in New York. Wax lyrical about this. David's been in New York a few times. And he absolutely fucking loves it. I think he's met some of the cast members as well. Stephen, I trust David when it comes to his his taste and things, because I usually share his taste when it comes to food, fucking, you know, New York and stuff like music, certainly football, just the the things he enjoys. If he says it's good, that's good enough for me. Yeah. Because the guy knows his fucking shit. David, David's not one of these guys that will sit down and watch television for no. the sake of it. No. He has to, it has to be a good reason. And also, this is yeah. a gangster setting, so I fucking love those kind of yeah. settings. I love the, the gangster movies, so <coughs> I don't need much push to go and watch this at some point. I will get down to it. But this is maybe a nice little appetizer. Get in and see this, and just the name, Stephen. Many Saints in Newark. I love That's that. cool, yeah. 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 I love that title. And we watched the trailer, and the trailer was absolutely yeah. class. Uh, this young guy looks brilliant. So you say it's Michael Gandolfini? Yeah, Michael, yeah. He looks class, he's got the 70s vibe down, he's got the haircut, the sort of 70s fashion, the, the whole period has been perfectly captured. And there's lots of stuff going on in there, there's lots of... Violence. <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> yeah. And violence. And it just looks like a beautiful precursor. So I don't know who's involved in the actual making of it, I don't know who's directing it, but it certainly looks like a promising little prequel movie. And look, it's probably perfect to bring this guy in because he will have likeness to James Gandolfini yeah, we know for does, a fact yeah, he has because it's does, right yeah. fucking in front of us. Yeah, right there, he that. does look like him. Yeah. It looks like a young version of him. Yeah. So I don't think you can get a better casting than that. And then, Stephen, you speak about why that's a, an interesting decision, him taking that on, because we have seen the likes of Wyatt Russell being asked, would he step into the role of whatever the fuck the character was from Escape? Snake Plissken, yeah. yeah. Snake Plissken. Yeah. Would they do that in a, a sequel to sort of... Escape of New York. Escape, escape New York. Escape, escape from, escape from New, York. New York. Escape yeah. from LA. LA. Yeah. And he says no, he wouldn't, because he's got respect <coughs> for the character. And he'd never felt he would be able to do it justice with his father's presence there, because his father done it. He done it very yeah. well. We've seen this before. We've seen umpteen. Obviously, Paul Walker dying. His brother having to stand in and do a scene. As I mentioned, the movie. Brandon Lee was yeah. asked to do Dragon the Bruce Lee story. I, I, I was melt. I had a meltdown when I was trying to explain that one, John because obviously I wasn't sure if we were actually live or not. Yeah. But um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I can understand that as well. I can understand why they don't want to touch it. I think as well with, in the case of Wyatt Russell, he, his dad's still, still, here, still yeah. here, you know. Yeah. And um, it's one of those ones where I think maybe... He doesn't really look like his dad. No, no he's so, got the chin and that's about it. Yeah. I think he looks probably more of his mother. But uh, Michael Gandolfini, looks John, fucking weird. he probably wants to make sure it's way. in good hands. And he knows that he's going to get... Or he's going to, you know, the director will get the best out of him as well. Because he's worked um, out for his father yeah, as much as yeah. his career. Yeah, exactly. He wanted to dedicate it to his father. He'll understand <clears> what his father put into it. You know, what to do it justice. So hopefully he has. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't, I can't imagine what it must be like emotionally stepping into that role, knowing fine well that there's, you know, there will be pressure with any film that an actor takes, especially an actor who's just starting out. 
and he's going to get a lot of attention because this this franchise has got such a large following. Mm. I wouldn't say cult following. I think it's beyond that. Yeah. Um, and I think um, the anticipation for something like this as well, it's different to Breaking Bad, I think, because... Yeah, El Camino. Because that was a kind of spin-off. That was yeah. a following from yeah. the end to the final sort of moment. And there wasn't as much a gap between the end of Breaking Bad and no. that film. Oh, there was a big enough and gap. yeah. Yeah, and the characters obviously it was a continuation of one character going yeah. off in a different direction to what was already and he was laid fairly out. Youngish and he but this is like yeah. how those characters. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll get some of the other characters that are in the Sopranos appearing as younger selves in this yeah. film as well. Yeah, you um, have to. Yeah, and it's imagine. going to be very interesting to see how they all fall into place, how they got to where they are. When you watch episode one of the Sopranos season one. Uh, pilot or what it was called but um, it's very intriguing John and I'm very looking for very much to seeing this um, and it might spark something in me that goes you know something I want to watch The Sopranos now uh, Steve, late to the party but <laughs> yeah we don't mention by that by 20 now. years uh, Stephen look you spoke about El Camino there and Paul was fucking brilliant and that Jesse Plemons came back yeah played the sort of right wing nutter who was keeping them obviously captive if you like if that's even the right word he's captured them he imprisoned them, <laughs> the bus cycles. And that's what the movie, the pretext was. It goes back, it's flashbacks. This guy's got PTSD, he just escaped where he is. And if it's half as good as that sort of vibe, a spin off of what a, a very successful TV show, then you're onto fucking something special. Because I, I enjoyed El Camino. Yeah, you I reviewed it, it, yeah. Yeah, it was a natural conclusion to that character's arc. Yeah. A character that sadly never got its just desserts because it was all about Brian Cranston. Yeah. And that, that great character. So you couldn't really do. The, the character of Jesse Pinkman credit in that final sort of season because it was all about him and Heisenberg getting to his natural conclusion. Yeah, the dog's absolutely destroying his <laughs> paw at the moment. Do you know what I have to say? I know we're going to be talking about something in a minute, but he actually sounded like Weasel. <laughs> yeah, yes, he did. Yeah. Not as crazy yeah. looking as Weasel, but yeah, we'll, we'll go on to that, Stephen. Yeah, we'll just, because, we'll, look, I think yeah, we will. Because I'm I, I, you know, we've seen the trailer, we're looking forward to it. I'm very interested to see how Ma- Michael Gandolfini fills those shoes, and I'm sure he will. I've got confidence in this because just from that what we've seen in that trailer um, excites me but we're going to move on to our final topic John just three tonight um, but we find that you know I think yeah, when it's, it's yourself John you, you, you've got to cover yeah. maybe about five or six topics because you're on your own but just um, to fill it out but I think yeah. sometimes even I'm regretting it at times because it goes on for a well while <laughs> and it's like fucking hell I, I didn't think I could got, drag it out that long yeah, I was, especially when you get people in the chat you know yeah that that's what's out. good that's good yeah. yeah I love getting people in sadly but we're not getting much tonight because we're Mike's not really Mike's still waiting Mike's still waiting so yeah, Mike, sorry we're, Mike we're really sorry about this but sorry we will Mike. get that uh, up as soon as possible fuck up of a but we'll keep this topic very brief so we can do it right away but James Gunn says he has a lot of ideas in store for the Suicide Squad's Weasel. Um, Weasel. John, writer, director Weasel. James Gunn teases that he has written a lot of ideas for more of Weasel in the DC Extended Universe after the Suicide Squad. How do you Squad. think they say it in the South of America? No. We should yeah. say Weasel. Um, Weasel. This week saw Gunn host a Twitch, uh, sorry, a Twitter, I've got Twitch in the brain now, Twitter uh, watch party for, thank Christ for Twitch, Twitch uh, for the Suicide Squad, revealing new secrets for the DCEU sequel and answering some of the fans' burning questions. One such question posed was whether the writer-director would be writing, interested in writing an extend, ext- uh, expanded show backstory back. or a continuation of Weasel's story from the film, to which Gunn teased he has already done so, and this was the post here, <laughs> as you can see. 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Francis Ford Coppola. It was very interesting, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but um, John, this guy called uh, underscore Crazy Possum, that's a good name, uh, asked James Gunn, would you want to do a backstory or a continuation of Weasel's story? And James Gunn replied back, he's such a, a great guy when it comes to interaction with the fans. I've written a lot of ideas for this. So there you are, simple as that, but whether or not Warner Brothers will take him up on it is another thing. He can write all he wants. Do they I want to see a weasel? Do you think? Do you think the character? I don't think big weasel enough to carry a, a film. I don't think weasel is a character big enough to carry its own movie. I don't think we'll get weasel. Maybe we'll turn up Shazam too. Well, that's what I was going to say. Maybe spin-offs. Yeah, I'm popping up like I don't know. Well, his, his fucking bro for one, he pops up lots of movies. <laughs> but uh, fucking Howard, uh, Ron Howard's. What's Clint, his name? Yeah, him turning up in little I said cameos Clint. in movies. Clint. By the way, I said Clint. Well, he is a bit of a... Yeah, 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 yeah. See you next Tuesday. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, yes. That was quite Stephen. I like that. Uh, Stephen, it could be like that. It could be like a Clint Howard cameo. This guy just keeps... This guy, this fucking weasel. <laughs> this insane-looking weasel. Weasel guy. This 
squinted, demented looking creature that's got a propensity for licking things yeah. to maybe pop up in other movies and it's almost like, I don't know, Stan Lee on the DC. Yeah, that is, yeah. <laughs> He falls up down again. He it could be that guy. And it, disappears. it could be that guy for DC, yeah. yeah. Why not? You know, <laughs> popping up. Well, if, uh, James Gunn's going to be doing uh, the sort of Kevin Feige experience over on DC and doing lots of DC products, and maybe not just uh, products, uh, the productions, and maybe not just directing, but producing and being involved. Maybe you can just write that into the contract. I want Weasel and everything, even if it's a, a brief spot setting, like fucking it. Yeah. Pennywise, Bill Skarsgård's it. You, you blink and he's doing some weird fucking distorted look. Mm. The, the sort of projector moment in the trailer. Miss. Yeah. He's, he's in there. Weasel's in there. I don't know what the ideas are, Stephen. He's written a lot of ideas. I thought he was dead and buried, I've got to be honest. I was fucking howling at it in the first five minutes of this movie. He was suited and booted. He looked very nervous. He wasn't suited and booted. Nothing on. But uh, what I'm saying is he was metaphorically suited yeah. and booted. He was ready for action. It was he was so funny, into, yeah. falls into the water and drowns. Yep. And just a shot swim. of his cop sort of lying on the beach as they were playing through. Uh, there was a song playing. I still there. think Michael Rickers. Oh, brilliant! At the start was hilarious. The fact that he was a psychotic sort of guy. He was in isolation he in built prison. Built up to be a sort of hard man. Fucking yeah. hard man. And not only was he the the pussy of the the sort of operation, but yeah. he was the most sensible. He was actually the sanest. Uh, he we thought he was so insane that he would be right in. All these other characters, javelin man, all of this shit, getting fucking blown up, getting shot. <laughs> There was treachery in there and they were getting double timed. This guy's like, fuck this, I'm away. Mm. Just thought, I thought that was brilliant. But a little weasel, he was alive at the end, I was glad. And uh, he's, he's, in a sense, giving his, his brother a paycheck. Yeah. He's allowing him to come Perhaps back. Perhaps James Gunn has ideas for a television show. That well, we know work. we're doing a Peacemaker spin off, yeah. and I was actually going to speak about it last night, but there was not enough meat on the bones for mm. me to tackle it on my own. Some, a potential blood sport. Yeah, spin-off TV show. Yeah. Apparently Idris Elba was interested in exploring this character, maybe a prequel scene, how he get in a yeah, tussle with Superman, how the fuck that happened. Mm. He get a kryptonite bullet and yeah, not decapitated, because that'd be fucking weird. Incapacitated. Yeah. <laughs> Superman, there's a lot of decapitation <laughs> in that Kingsman trailer that I reacted to. I don't know yeah. if you've seen that, Stephen. That, there's a lot of decapitation in the Suicide Squad beach was, yeah, scene, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was a decapitation in the eyes moving. The limbs coming off. Yeah, that was fucking great. King Shark, man. <laughs> Uh, nom nom I don't know if we can get him in I don't know if that can happen yeah. but, I, but Stephen I like the characters we spoke about it in the review it was one of the strong points of that movie the, really the whole premise of this movie was about that squad of guys mm. and women gals it wasn't about the villains Star was alright but it was about being invested in this squad dysfunctional it was fucking stupid <laughs> but being invested in this squad yeah and, enjoying their sort of banter and what great banter and bouncing off each other hey you you cheeky tit and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> you imagine Alan Partridge in a fucking two yeah. imagine Harry Quinn saying that line Norfolk's the maddest man yeah. strongest man <laughs> <laughs> that's his fucking superhero alias mm. Norfolk's the maddest man oh fuck what's his what, what, what do you think we'll go off on a tangent here Stephen just uh, <laughs> entertain it <laughs> <laughs> for a moment <laughs> we'll not linger too long okay. what do you think that Alan Partridge's superhero power would be boring people to death uh, maybe his facts he's got a lot of facts hasn't he hitting people with a spoon with a yeah. sausage could be yeah <laughs> could be putting on his driving gloves playing gloves. Um, air bass yeah, yep he's good at that and talking about Bloody Sunday yeah and getting it completely he always wanted to be James Bond didn't yeah he? exactly yeah. Stephen Oh, fuck, wouldn't that be great, man? That's another thing. Getting off yeah. on a tangent very, very briefly before we round this up. <laughs> Steve Coogan getting a sort of spin off uh, Johnny English affair, but it's not James Bond, it's like a Johnny English, a sort of comedic James Bond affair. Yeah. I'd fucking watch that, I tell you. <laughs> I'd watch it. He's fucking classic. Possibly. Uh, what have I done? <laughs> the DC fandom, yeah. Donnie Yen. I don't remember talking about Donnie Yen. <laughs> we'll just go to you. Yeah. Fucking shambles. Uh, a symbolic uh, show all in, but I enjoy speaking. Yeah, it was good. Uh, as I always do, uh, I'm trying to search for topic bars that are topic graphics aren't in this scene, which sums up this fucking <coughs> show. John, we've got one person waiting on YouTube. I feel really bad oh, for Oh, it'll be Mike. Uh, and yeah. uh, we'll have to write in the comment Yeah, there's been a fuck up and it'll be uploaded. We'll have there. to get him on the show, I think. Just, if Mike, if yeah. Mike's game for coming on the show, yeah. I'll absolutely get him on. I'm, I'm fucking happy to get a lot of people on the show and yeah. just get different voices. Well, speaking. we're working on something, John. Mm. I think I've got a title for it already, but we'll talk about that off air. Mm. Intriguing. Series, yeah. Intrigo, Chico yeah. time. Yep. But that's going uh, around the show. <laughs> that's a callback to a famous moment when we were doing pre-recording. Yeah. 
Uh, what's your thoughts on the topics we've touched upon? That's us finished. Well uh, done, I'm yeah. Just looking at my watch here because it's brief coming up. I don't want to brief. <gasps> I breathe every moment. Yeah, you get pulled up for breathing on this yes, show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> From someone of the community. I sounded like that guy there. Do you know him? It's the the lads down in London. Drink, drink, drink. (laughs) Um. (laughs) He was a fucking gimp, wasn't he, man? Oh, Oh, dear. What a posh boy he was. What's your fortune of show, though? What do you make about Francis Ford Coppola Megalopolis? It's happening. And he's looking to recruit quite the little star-studded cast to help him in his endeavours. Sounded Irish, (laughs) John. Endeavours. Oh, I should find you uh, another Irish accent, shouldn't I? With his endeavours. What's your thoughts on it? You can comment down below if you've got any thoughts down there in the comment section. What do you make about the other stuff we touched upon? Michael Gandolfini. James Gandolfini's son from Tony Soprano fame is looking to play the character for enough. And what's your thoughts on it? Do you think this mini sense of Newark TV or movie, I should say, do you think that could be a hit? I'm, I'm trying to sound like the, uh, the Onion Knight from uh, Game of Thrones but it's not really working and finally what do you make about the Suicide Squad's Weasel potentially <laughs> my fucking doing here uh, potentially getting future appearances in the DC with James Gunn being the sort of head figure omnipotent omni- omnipotent omnipresent omnipotent force over at DC <laughs> omnipotent <laughs> omnipresent accent, force yeah. omnipotent omnipresent force you can comment both again if you see it, but that's well. You can also like the video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel on YouTube and hit the follow button over on Twitch. <coughs> Thank you to anybody that was in on Twitch. It was always here. Yeah. If you want to see more content on us in the future, you will get it. But until then, I'm done. Steam's done. Goodbye. Bye-bye. I am a man without conviction. See ya.